Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in with us yet again today. Now, before we get into today's top five stories, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and give us an old share on social media if you can. And if you like listening on a podcast player, there's a link down below in the description, which will take you to a website that shows you all the available podcast channels that we're on. And finally, if you feel like supporting the show, there's also a link down below in the description where you can buy us a coffee and a it's always much appreciated. So now that that's all done and dusted, we're going to jump into, as I said, the top five stories doing the rounds today in Thailand. Royal decree for house dissolution ready for submission to the to His Majesty the King. A royal decree to dissolve the house is now ready for the Thai Prime Minister Priya Chan Cha to submit to His Majesty the King for a royal command to be announced without the need for cabinet approval. Deputy Prime Minister Wasana Kregnaham said today. He said that a royal decree to dissolve the House is the only decree which does not require cabinet approval, adding that the House cannot be dissolved until the Election Commission has completed a constituency election mapping. The EC submitted its revised constituency election mapping, complete with the number of constituency MPs for each province and the map of each constituency to the Office of the Secretariat of the Cabinet today for publishing in the Royal Gazette. Vasanu expects that the House will be dissolved on March 20th or 21st or 22nd because March 23rd will be the final day of the four-year term of the government. He said that the Cabinet meeting next Tuesday will be its last before the dissolution of the House. So there you go, folks. The general election in Thailand will be roughly around the beginning of May and we'll probably and we will hopefully have a new government and people who want to actually get stuff done. But don't hold your breath either. Who knows the political shenanigans that may get up and going around the country over the next few weeks. But we'll keep an eye out. We'll report the winners and the big losers. And of course, uh, it'll all be here on the Thai Expat Daily Show. Now, a report that has come out has uh, basically said Thailand is not free, according to the latest Freedom House report. Thailand is still not a free country, according to Freedom House latest report. The 2023 edition of the report covers developments in 195 countries and 15 territories from January 2022 through to December 2022, so basically last year. The report assesses the real-world rights and freedoms enjoyed by individuals. A country or territory is awarded 0 to 4 points for each of the 10 political rights indicators and 15 civil liberty indicators. Thailand's total score in the 2023 edition was 30 out of 1. 100, 6 for political rights and 24 for civil liberties. The country score in 2022 was 29, 5 for political rights and 24 for civil liberties. In ASEAN, Thailand overall score was less than Indonesia, which was on 58, the Philippines 58, Malaysia 53 and Singapore 47, all of which are considered partly free countries. The ASEAN country that scored the most for political rights was Indonesia, 30, and the worst was Myanmar, minus 4. The ASEAN country that scored the most for civil rights was the Philippines, 33, and the worst was Laos, 11. The report noted that Thailand's military-dominated and semi-elected government has, has employed authoritarian tactics including arbitrary arrests, intimidation, less majeste charges, and harassment of activists to suppress pro-democracy demonstrations since 2021. They said press freedom in the country is constrained, due process is not guaranteed, and there is impunity for crimes committed against activists. Freedom House pointed to I-Law's report on the use of Pegasus spyware against activists, political party members, journalists, and academics. In 2014, as Army Chief Pride staged a coup against, against the democratically elected government and declared himself Prime Minister, report read, Pryat retained his post in 2019 through the support of a pro-military bloc in the lower house and votes for from 249 military appointed senators, it's stated. So that's the latest report from the Freedom House. What do you think? Do you think they're bang on the money? Do you think it's exaggerated? Or do you think Thailand enjoys some kind of uh, more freedoms than the report suggests? I'd love to know your opinions down below. Now, a story which uh, is coming out of Patong in Phuket. And to be quite honest, it's disgusting. And I think these are the kind of things that need to be broadcast about what is going on in this cesspit known as Patong. Patong Bar raided for child sex trafficking. A special operations team from the Department of Provincial Administration, that's the DOPA, raided a bar off Bangla Road, Patong last night, where two women were charged with sex trafficking underage prostitutes, the youngest of whom was 15 years old. 
The raid was ordered by the DOPA Director General after he received a tip-off from Operations Underground Railroad, a United States-based non-profit organization involved in the rescue of human trafficking and sex trafficking victims with a special focus on children. The tip-off explained that the Velvet Bar on Soy Sea Dragon was operating as a general bar for tourists but was offering underage girls as prostitutes to foreign customers. The raid began at 8pm after an undercover officer posing as a customer entered the bar and confirmed that the bar was providing underage girls for sex. Taksor Nam Supraka Khan was confirmed to be the bar manager, while Wachara Porn Yuki Tom Mack was identified or as the broker who recruited children to sell sex. The two women were placed under arrest and later charged for human trafficking for the purpose of sexual exploitation and of children. The two women were also deemed to be operating a brothel and charged for that also. While two, the two women were being taken away into custody, officers entered a hotel nearby where prostitutes working for the, bar, for the bar were waiting for customers. Six of the sex workers were underage. The youngest was just 15 years old. All six were taken into protective care. Human trafficking is a national problem, said the DPOA Inspector General after the raid. This may affect the economy and the image of Thailand, including the well-being of the people. Therefore, it is a problem that must be jointly solved. The Department of Provincial Administration, as an agency that takes care of the suffering of the people, has been accelerating the suppression of human trafficking to push forward to raise Thailand's ranking on the watch list of the U.S. State Department's Annual Trafficking and Persons Report from the Tier 2 to Tier 1, he said. Mr. Ranarong urged people to report any suspected activities of human trafficking and sexual exploitation of children to the DOPA Special Operations Department or by calling the national hotline which is 1567. Alternative people can make reports to the Damrong Dama Centre, that's the Provincial Ombudsman Office, via the hotline 1567 as well. Where to start in this whole story? Firstly, the words coming out of you know, these officials, they seem more concerned about the image of their country rather than the poor girls who have been trafficked legally into providing sex for dirty foreigners. And that's the truth. Now, that's the one time you're going to hear me use the word dirty foreigners. My personal opinion on this, as I say, it's disgusting. The people who have it that were arrested, the two women, they should get life in prison and should never see daylight again, in my opinion. I also think the hotel that had these girls in it should be shut down, the owner arrested, and anybody who has had anything to do with it, name shamed and tried under the law, because that's the way it should be. Now, the hotel will go and say, oh, we didn't know it was them uh, that they were underage. Well, if they're in your establishment, they're in your bar, you should know who the hell's in your bar, and you should have ID'd them if there's this girl sitting there. But of course they knew who they were, and that's the bottom line here. This is the kind of stuff that's going on in Patong. And I can tell you, it's not just there that's it happening. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but I think we can all, this is the tip of the iceberg. I think, in in Phuket. And Thailand seems to be always worried about its image. Forget about the image. How about just protect children first? Forget about, oh, it may affect our tourism industry and the headlines in the newspaper. Protect the children first. Then you can worry about everything else after that. Because to me, this is only about the image. Because a non-profit US organization confirmed that these girls were here is the reason that they acted. And I hope that more tips come in and that more people are arrested. And this filth that's going on in Patong the cesspit of Phuket is sorted out quickly and that the girls that are trafficked, the people that are doing it, meet their justice. And I I think most people could say this is just horrendous. I'm not naive to think that this isn't going on, but when you live on the island and you think that this island wants to be this, what do they call it, Um, a world destination. Well, this is the kind of stuff that doesn't go on in world, top class world destinations. It doesn't. And it needs to be stamped out and it needs to be sorted. And I tell you, it's quite easy to do. If anybody really cared, right, you could raid every bar every night in Patong. And I I can tell you it's sorted out very quickly. But they won't. They'll wait for a tip off. They'll leave children suffering. And they don't care because as long as it's not being publicized, who really cares, right? I hope the people who are involved in this get many, many years in prison. And I hope the children that have been trafficked receive the proper support. Though I, I feel in my heart they probably won't, but hopefully it will. And nevertheless... We'll move on from this story because I, it is a story that I, I think really hits home to a lot of people when, you, when you're living on an island and you know that this kind of filth is going on and there's certain people who are being attracted to this, to Phuket for this kind of disgusting, sick behavior. It needs to be stamped out. And those people that were in the bar, those foreigners in the bar that know about it, they also should be getting time in prison and then deported. And that's how I feel on it. 
Moving along, anti-corruption police join Chantelay playground probe. Now, this is quite an interesting story. The anti-corruption division of the Royal Thai Police have now joined the investigation into possible corruption by officers of Chantelay Municipality in Phuket in the purchase of the children's playground equipment installed at the Chantelay Sports Centre. Per Police Colonel Dr. Somsak, Superintendent of the ACD, Region 5 Branch, led off an inspection of the playground equipment yesterday. The purchase of the playground equipment is already under investigation by the Phuket Branch of the National Anti-Corruption Commission. The investigation was launched last month after Corruption Watchdog Strong Anti-Corruption Thailand Club reported that six small bouncy rides at the playground cost 65,000 baht each. The NACC Phuket office later reported that Chantelay Municipality in 2014 paid Genius Kids Co. Limited 1.193 million to install a pair of slides and a set of adventure swings priced at 870,500 baht. A year later in 2015, Chantelay Municipality contracted Genius Kids Co. Limited again, this time to install children's playground equipment worth 1.95 million. Before the inspection yesterday, Colonel Samsak and accompanying officers questioned Chantelay Mayor Sunian Ratchaparuk over the playground equipment purchase. The officers reviewed the purchasing process, competitive pricing analysis, selection of suppliers, terms of auctioning, and the overall value of the items, said an official report of the visit. The report noted that the equipment was purchased before the Public Procurement and Supplies Administration Act came into effect. However, the report did not explain what relevance this had on the investigation. According to the report posted in the Phuket Office of the Public Relations Department, the ACD office will now work with the NACC and the Office of Public Sector Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate the purchases. The investigators will question the officials involved, such as those responsible for price determination and auditing the purchase, as well as the production and distributors of the equipment and the staff at the Chantelay Children's Development Centre, the report noted. So more corruption, hard at it in Phuket, but I, I saw quite a good one today, and let me see if I can find it on the mobile phone. I took a screenshot of it because I thought it was hilarious. Um, it happened in Panya province, which is just beside um, Phuket, as many people will know. It's an advertisement for uh, a high chair, a children's high chair, that's priced at 790 baht, plus 55 baht 30 satang for the assembly service from Ikea. And this is advertised on Ikea's Facebook page. It's advertised on their website, if you go to it, this high chair. And in Panya, there is the identical chair. It's been used in a public restroom, okay, in uh, Muang district of Panya province. And it was brought at a price of 8,000 baht, plus 200 baht for the assembly service. So the identical same push chair costs 7,000 baht. 210 baht more than if you bought it in Ikea. Now imagine the corruption that's behind all that. And people are signing off on this to pay this money for a little plastic high chair. It's quite unbelievable, but really it's not unbelievable. I've seen it in other places too. There was another um, incident, I think it was in Panya province as well. I forget what it was for, but there was something that was priced ridiculously. I think it was some kind of a plant that you can buy for 20, 30 baht but they were being charged 10,000 baht or something each for it was something ridiculous like this. But again, corruption rife, taxpayers' money has been siphoned off and nobody ever seems to care about it. And finally, Colarn is drawing 10,000 tourists a day. More than 130,000 tourists have visited Colarn, a popular tourist island off Pattaya, so far this month, and the number will surge as Chinese tour groups start arriving in Pattaya soon. Manat Nong Yai, Deputy Mayor of Pattaya City, said on Wednesday that said that officials have been counting the number of visitors boarding passenger boats at Bali High Pier in South Pattaya for Kolarn since March 1st. Over the past two weeks, they counted about 130,000 tours or more than 10,000 visitors a day. Of the total, 70% were Thais, said Mr. Manut. The remaining 30% were from Russia, India and European countries, he added. There are still some COVID-19 prevention measures in Pattaya, but they have been reduced to body temperature checks, he said. The arrival of more tours has been a welcome boost to Pattaya's economy after more than two years in the doldrums because of the pandemic. Pattaya City has been looking to improve its infrastructure as arrivals will be boosted further now that China is allowing tour groups to travel abroad. Facilities at tourist venues such as Naban Pier and Tawen Beach Pier and roads will be developed as budgets have been already been allocated, said Mr. Manut. However, he acknowledged that the number of hotel rooms was not enough to serve the rising number of tours arriving in the beach town. 
Oh yeah, another, I guess, the lack of sustainability for a small island. I mean, can it sustain 10,000 visitors a day or 130,000 visitors in the first, you know, 13 days of the month? That to me sounds like something that hasn't been thought through very much. And with that many people going to a very small island, I think there needs to be questions about sanitation, rubbish, how it's all being cleared up and whether or not it's actually good for the economy as a whole in the whole sustainability factor of these things. And I don't think a lot of thought has really been put into it, but I'd like to know what you think about it. 10,000 a day, would you be joining the queue to go abroad and go on the boat and head over? I'd love to know your opinion as always. And that's it, folks, for today. Thanks again for tuning in. I will have another show in the next couple of days. Have a great day. Stay safe. And uh, thanks once again. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.